Hey, Rick Says here. Welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, where I hope to provide entertaining conversations with retailers, brand managers, athletes, executives, and others in the outdoor biz to get their stories, tips, strategies, productivity tricks, and ideas that you can apply and take your career or business to the next level. Hey guys, this episode is with Big City Mountaineers board member emeritus Jeff Weedman. Jeff tells us how he got his start in the outdoors. We talk about his rep agency in the Midwest and the great things Big City Mountaineers are doing for young people. Enjoy. Hey guys, today I'm speaking with Big City Mountaineers board member Jeff Weedman. Welcome to the show, Jeff. It's good to be here. Awesome. Good to have you on board. What's uh, what's going on this morning? Well, uh, I'm going to take my dog out for a walk. I got the day off, so... Uh... Today's a, today's a good day. Might even go sailing. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Where would you go sailing? On Lake Mendota. Oh, um, cool. in my In my opinion, one of the best inland sailing lakes in the nation. It's right here in Madison. Really? Interesting. And so yeah, what do you sail? Uh, I sail laser. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The boat of truth. <laughs> exactly. There's <laughs> just one guy. You can't blame it on anybody else. That's right. It's all up to you. Yep. I was uh, when I was living in the Bay Area. I got the photo Bay Area. I got to photograph some guys in Weta trimarans running around oh, San Francisco Bay. Holy crap! Yeah, you That's can water a lot ski of work. behind those things. Yeah. yeah, you can water ski behind those things. It was amazing. Yeah. So um, let's begin with your first exposure to the outdoors. Was that as a kid? Um, it was. I, I grew up in a really rural environment. There uh, wasn't a lot of a lot of people around, so yeah. there was there was just a lot of woods and stuff to to hike in. And uh, I, I was really fortunate. There was almost forty kilometers of Nordic trails right out my front door. Nice. And, yeah, and there was an alpine, small alpine area uh, that had adjoined those trails uh, right across the valley so yeah. uh, really easy to stay busy all winter i mean where i grew up in minnesota you either played hockey or you went skiing <laughs> <laughs> and you opted for skiing smart choice <laughs> i opted for skiing and i still have my teeth that yeah, was, exactly uh, yeah and did you do any uh paddle sports in the in the summers i didn't uh no? not back then i i started paddling when i was probably 16 i took my first trip to boundary waters and, oh nice uh, yeah, yeah, that was my my first real explo- exposure to a multi day trip. That's I a special up, there was place. Some, yeah, it is. It is, and uh, special for me. I mean, I think I've done. I lost count, but I've done over forty trips up there. And, wow, uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them with people I that I really bonded with. So yeah, yeah, that's got, been a that's been a big push for me. I got to get back up there. I've only been there with the Holtons at their little cabin on Lake Vermilion. That was awesome. Well, was and, and interestingly enough, that is adjacent to uh, the uh, BCM base camp up there. Oh, really? Interesting. I didn't yeah, know we're, that. Yeah, we're right on the Pike River Flowage, and then uh, they're on Vermilion, which adjoins that. Oh, cool. Interesting. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. so how did you get into Repi? And I know we first met way back when uh, we were bringing Mont Bell into the U.S. the first time, <laughs> the first coming of Mont Bell. <laughs> The program that started slow and tapered off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're still plugging away though. Tatsuno's a great guy. I saw Masaki at the show guy. last summer. He looks good. So yeah, they're yeah, plugging good, away. good. Yeah. No, I uh, I I was working. My very first job was in a backpacking store. I got I got a job. I didn't wasn't interested in the outdoors. I was interested in making some money. <laughs> right. And uh, well, then why'd you get into the outdoor biz? <laughs> exactly. And the the. Uh, I got a job there when I was 16. I just got my driver's license, and oh, cool. uh, it it was you know basically sweeping the floors and counting stock and doing stuff like that. And uh, I worked for that guy for the summer, and and he was a terrible boss, and he was just like the rudest uh, introduction to the work you know that that I've ever had. Really? But, wow, that's too bad. Yeah. What what it did was it 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 got me a job at another store. Uh, where I was stringing tennis rackets and, uh, <laughs> somebody, I was interviewing somebody else the other day and they were talking about stringing tennis rackets and drilling bowling balls. Oh yeah. Drilling bowling ball. I never, yeah. I never got to the, I never got to that level, <laughs> uh, but, but I did string tennis rackets, Awesome. but anyway, they were, they were a Jansport dealer and, uh, uh, they, there was, uh, uh, a deal where Lou Whitaker came to speak. 
Oh, nice. And uh, at, a, at, a, at a local area, and then they, they sent all the dealers there, and, and they sent me there um, because they thought I, you know, I might be able to sell stuff. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> imagine that. Well, <laughs> and, and it turns out you could. Hey, imagine and that. And it turns out I could, right? <laughs> yeah. So I went up, and I saw Lou speak, and I got so inspired that I came back, and I bought a Jansport trail dome and a Jansport wow, bag and, yeah. and a uh, – and uh, a class five pack. Yeah. And yep. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with them, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I thought it'd be great to have the gear. And then lo and behold, a bunch of high school buddies decided that four of us went up to Bounty Waters. And then that's when I really drank the Kool-Aid. I got out on a trip and it went, whoa, this is really cool. And, and uh, kind of never looked back. So right. I, I worked at that job uh, in the winters and the summers. I had a, it, when I was in high school, I was working 40 hours a week. And, at that store, and, yeah, wow, and awesome. uh, and they're still there. Oh, sweet, uh, they're, yeah, they're still still what's going. The, what and, shop and, is it? Tyrol Ski and Sports in yeah, Rochester, yeah, yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. awesome, yeah, fantastic yeah. dealer. Yeah, and, cool. Uh, really good people, and uh, the guy that owned it was a big mentor of mine. We'll put a link to their shop in the show notes. Yeah, I'd like that. I'd yeah. like that. Awesome. And, uh, really, like I say, really great people, and they're they're still plugging away. But anyway, uh, I, I, I went to college and I decided I, I wanted to be a, a rep because mm-hmm. I, I, there was ski reps calling on me all the time. And it was like, these guys really have the life and yeah, blah, exactly. blah, blah, blah. Right. So I got a degree in marketing at uh, Colorado State and uh, came out and there was no work anywhere. And the, the, the hilarious thing was <laughs> I, I went back into retail at Airwine in, okay. uh, yeah. in Madison. Yeah. And... A guy offered me a job to work for, wait for it, Yeah, Columbia Sportswear, uh-huh. but <laughs> I didn't think it was cool, so I didn't do it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Giant mistake number one. <laughs> Swing and a miss. You got two strikes Swing. left, kid. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and so I, I passed on that opportunity and stayed in retail and, uh, became a buyer and a store manager and all that. And then it became very clear to me that the reps were working really hard spring and fall, but were really loose uh, summer and winter, which is when I like to ski and sail and do stuff like yeah, that. They had, back then they had a good cycle and they were making pretty good money too. So yeah. Oh yeah. If you got, yeah, those, obviously you had to have good lines, but yeah. Yeah. Those were the days. And, uh, and there was good lines everywhere. There was good right. lines and reps. Right. I mean, it was, it was a free for all. And you're right. The money was really good. I mean, people made, fortunes back then and yet they worked hard i mean everybody worked hard but it was just everything was so new and and just you know everything was growing it was awesome heady days yeah and not not as corporate and not as fun right. as it is now i mean it right. was kind of the wild west and uh, right. anyway so i uh i decided i wanted to be a rep and i went to work for a sales agency i was a cog in a wheel uh, i was an associate like in a, in a giant agency, we represented all the Johnson camping lines and Fox River and Allen A. And I mean, just big lines. And I worked for them for four years and learned the trade and then decided that the only way I was going to get ahead was uh, to do my own deal. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And then I saw the Mont Bell, uh, the Mont Bell opportunity. Yeah, and yeah. that, that, and, and there, Rick, is where our paths cross for the first time. And, and you were at the helm of an FMC motorhome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you I, are. And, and I use the term at the helm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I could pass cars going up the grapevine in that thing. And, and the, in LA. And the, it hauled yeah, us. And yeah. the, uh, the, the, the genius of the people that were heading up Mont Bell was that uh, you were going to work California in a motorhome. Yep, and and then the rest of California, us were California, Arizona, and Nevada in a motorhome. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah, it's small territory. Small yep. territory. Yep. Just do big yeah. laps. Yeah, exactly. Just keep the pedal to the metal exactly. and hope the thing doesn't break down, which it would on a regular basis. So, <laughs> you know the story better than I do. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, I'll never forget. I, yeah. I I remember looking at you, going, "I can't believe he's going to drive that thing from dealer to dealer. <laughs> that is crazy." But, uh, well, yeah, you know, so they were ahead more... of their time because look at everybody's doing it now. You know, I mean, it was they were ahead of their time and it was a great idea. But back then, the challenge was the, the shops were so small, the right. owner was the buyer, was the guy on the floor. So he couldn't leave the shop because the theory right. was I would bring him out to the motorhome, serve him a Coke, show him the line. They couldn't right. leave the store. So I ended up parking. Drink the Kool-Aid. 
I end up parking six blocks away and hauling all the fleece into the store in, you know, Arizona in August. So, but it was fun. Yeah. It was a great experience. No, it was a great experience. And, the, and that was a great group of people. Yeah, uh, that was a really Force fun was, time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. I remember the, uh, the uh, first sales meeting we had, and I think it was in Bishop at Doug's place. Uh, I think the first one was at the uh, airport Best Western Inn in Reno, but we did have one at oh, Doug's I miss, place. I, I missed that one. Yeah. Okay. So Doug's place at <laughs> Rock Creek. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Doug Robinson. Yeah. So that, yeah, that was yeah. awesome. I saw him the other day. So anyway, I went, I went to work for those guys and lost a bunch of money. And, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I caught the attention of a Minneapolis firm because uh, I was working really hard and I was knocking off their, their marmot dealers. Oh, right. Yeah, and that uh, was uh, Bill Kaplan and Pat Padman. And I yep. merged with them. Yeah, and uh, we built that business up over. Well, I was there for ten years, and then uh, they bought me out. Oh wow! Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you guys had buyout. a bunch of great lines too. I mean, that was a good ten-year run. You had Yakima. We had some every great, great line. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was a great ride. So, yeah. uh, so I did that, and then uh, uh, got bought out of that, and then uh, bought Rutabaga. Uh, when it was running into uh, legal problems, okay. uh, that would have been, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you buy that great... solo or it was Darren a partner back then, too? Darren was a partner. OK, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, he ended up buying me out after five years, which was the plan. I uh, gotcha. I told him I'd help him straighten it out. But I, I really wasn't interested in going back into retail for the mm-hmm. long haul. So. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, and that I sold that a couple of years ago and then. You know, now I'm kind of coasting. <laughs> now you're, now you're, <laughs> you're a free agent. Well, now, so you're also very involved in Big City Mountaineers, been involved for a long time. Tell our yeah, listeners, 14 years. 14 years, yeah. In case folks don't know, tell us a little bit about Big City Mountaineers. Uh, Big City Mountaineers uh, serves urban youth with, uh, with uh, eight-day wilderness trips. Uh, these are transformational trips mm-hmm. uh, that they go on and. uh we do about 70 of those expeditions a year. We really? Operate I didn't of, realize it was that many. 70 a yeah. year. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And we operate out of uh, Seattle, Portland, Bay Area, Denver, uh, Miami, where it was founded, and huh. uh, Minneapolis. And then we just opened in Boston uh, nice. last year. Excellent. Yeah, yeah I know yeah, they so do trips ex- over here in the Sierra. I've, i got to figure out how to get on one of those and help you guys out. Yeah, be a mentor. It's it's really fun. I just yeah. got back from a trip in uh, in northern Minnesota and it was fantastic. Cool. Yeah. We'll it teach was fantastic. The, we'll teach those kids some photography skills while they're out there. Well, actually that's a, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. You know, teach them yeah. something. <laughs> exactly. um, you know, something. Yeah. Be a mentor, teach them something, but uh, no, they really benefit by the trip. We've been in business uh, 27 years now and yeah, uh, yeah the the founder is a close friend of mine and one of my mentors, uh, Jim Kern, uh, oh, who know. founded it in Florida. Great guy. Huh. Um, Did he have a mountaineering background, or what was his background? Uh, hiking. Hiking. He, okay. he, yeah. he founded the American Hiking Society, the American Trails Association. Oh, okay. Founded the Florida Trails Association. He's in the process of connecting the the CDT and the PCT uh, getting eminent domain on those uh, gaps oh, and, cool. and, and, and making them contiguous like the AT is. So that's his, that's his current uh, push. Excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jim has a motto that he just can't walk away from a good idea. <laughs> that's a good motto. I like it. <laughs> it is. He's it a busy is. guy it's, then. Yeah. He is. And he's vital. I, I, I Jim's got to be late seventies, early eighties, somewhere in there. And he's still cranking away. I mean, awesome. he's uh, we're working on a on a uh, um, a path together this year to to uh, rebuild the the Minnesota Tower property. It got burned down in May, which is really oh, unfortunate. Wow, that's yeah. yeah, so we're going to rebuild that, and then uh, we're also trying to buy uh, a portion of the building we're in in Golden. So we're we're, oh, mm-hmm. we're really working on the real estate end of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That'd be some good assets to have for you guys. Yeah. Yeah, but Big City's been really important to me. I mean, it cemented my relationship with Skip Yowl, which yeah, is yeah. another one of my mentors. And uh, I worked for him at Jansport for eight years. Yeah, and, I, got to work, uh, I was fortunate to work with him for a couple of years while I was there. What a great guy. That's right. You yeah. were out, out at uh, out at Jansport, and uh, yeah. what a great guy. Oh, what man, great amazing guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, he's done so much for this industry. I mean, just it's awesome. His book, oh. his book is fabulous. He's touched yep. so many lives, both you know directly in the industry and outside the industry. He's just a fabulous guy. Yeah, yeah, I'll miss him. I'll yeah. miss him. I saw him right before he passed. 
Yeah, I hadn't seen him. I saw him at the show before he passed. I was trying to make it out there, but just it was to hell and work. gone, man. I mean, he, he <laughs> lived in a he lived in a town of twelve people. Yeah, yeah. I had I've been there. I've been to his his saloon out there. We had a Jansport product uh, inspiration meeting out. There. It was awesome. Great place, man. Yeah, yeah and hanging out there place, with Skip was just a blast. Yeah, and way out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how can people get involved in Big City? Uh, go to our website, bigcitymountaineers.org, yeah. and okay. you can engage at a number of levels. Yeah. Some people do fundraising through Summit for Someone and Bag of Peak. Uh, that's really popular. Other people go out as a mentor on the trail awesome. with the kids. Yeah. That's another way. Um, there's there's just a lot of ways to cool. engage. Well, we'll put a link to that in the show notes, too. So Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. It's yeah. .org, not .com. Gotcha. So yep. okay, cool. .com takes you down a rabbit hole. <laughs> We can avoid rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, I got to avoid those. So what's your perspective on how the outdoor biz has evolved over the years? Things have changed a lot from your days as a retailer and even your days as a rep. Yeah, one year uh, or one word I think is consolidation. Yeah, um, that's been a common you know, theme. That, that, it's just been a common theme. And yeah. with conso- consolidation comes a, you know, a concentration. Uh, power and and uh, and influence and yeah. you know you see that today with VF and Columbia where they're they're right. very influential uh, on and and I really applaud the Patagonians of the world that have stayed independent mm-hmm. and yeah. Uh, yeah. you know are are still slugging it out on their own. Yeah. Um, that's on the on the manufacturing front on the, on the retail front the lines are getting blurred. Uh, between retailers are becoming manufacturers. You know, you look at REI yeah, right, and they, right. they're manufacturing their own stuff. Manufacturers are becoming retailers uh, and selling direct more and more. Yeah, most um, retailers are com- competing with almost all the brands that they sell. Yeah, which is really new. Uh, yeah, I mean, new yeah. is in the last ten years. I right, mean, that right. that just but but that's the result of the consolidation and, and the grab for profits and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then in the middle which is where the reps are is absolutely the worst place to be. <laughs> it is. There's, there's very little upside at this point. And, uh, well, there's a lot I, more. There's, I think there's significant upside from my perspective, but there's a lot more work involved. It's no longer, you know, that cycle of going on the road, showing the line, hitting a few regional shows, going to the big show, writing all the orders and right. being done for a bit. That's, right. You're just on the road all the time. Well, and that's why I got out of it. I, yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's like, I can't win this. I can't, I, and I'm speaking from my own perspective. There's sure, plenty of people yeah. out there that are winning. But. Yeah. There's some great reps and, you know, great brands and great retailers. I mean, yeah. Aaron's doing a bang up job, a job at Rutabaga. I mean, I love yeah, him on the show. He's killing it. Yeah. He is doing really well. And, uh, I think he's an example of an independent dealer that's really flourished because right. he's focused. Yeah. Yeah, and well, there, there's he, two. Re- well, and and I think there's two reasons why he's been successful. One, he's focused on on paddle sports. Two, he's on the waterfront. Yeah, well, that helps. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, I I think it's beyond help. I mean, I, I I think without the waterfront, it would be a lot more difficult for him to have the position he has, just yeah. because he can compete easily with REI and uh, what used to be Gander, and, right? You know, and people like that because he's got a location that, you know. It's like having a ski shop and having a lift right out the back door. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well, he's doing a lot of a lot of things that, you know, we used to do back in the days when you worked you and I both worked retail. It's old school blocking and tackling. I mean, I think he said right. it best. You gotta love your customer and right. give them reasons to come by and say hi, new stuff, activities, Every events. Day. He's just killing it. Every day. Yeah. 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 He's doing great. You should get him on the show. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to reach out to him. So uh where do you think the industry is going what's your thoughts on the future i think it'll be more of the same mm-hmm. uh things will continue to consolidate i think it'll be more difficult for uh for small guys to to grow and you know it's, it's not as entrepreneurial as it used to be mm-hmm. a- and what that adds up to is is less new product less innovation you know and things like that M- more yeah. companies taking the safe way through right and right. uh you know, and, and I've noticed that at the last few shows, it's like I'll talk to buyers. It's like, well, what's new and interesting? It's like, shit, it's more of the same. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, I think that's happening. It'll go through the cycle, and I think it'll come out the other side. But. There's a cool new, a few new things going on out when you go out to that venture out section of the show. There's some interesting stuff out there. But you're right. It's, mostly, really it's mostly same, same. You're right. Yeah. 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 Same old, same old. I but I, 
I continue to love the industry. I mean, I, I go to, I go to trade show twice a year and, yeah. um, I, I like my position at big city mountaineers and that I, you know, I, I don't have a product to, to sell to the, to the manufacturers other than our services to kids, which is an easy right. sell. Right. You know, right. so. Right. Well, yeah, it's very inspiring so, what you do. So that helps. Yeah. yeah, it is inspiring. And you look at the industry, you know, what are their two big, two big push forwards the two big push forwards are we want kids outside and we want diversity right you know, it's like we provide that in spades yeah exactly yeah well, that's awesome so, so what yeah. opportunities do you see for young people just starting out wanting to get in the biz say they want to you know start out as a retailer or a rep i mean it's, it's a little more challenging on the retail side these days but that's still a good place to start it is a good place to start. I, I, I think I would start in retail, yeah. you know, to, to work for a specialty dealer or an REI or somebody like that. You, yeah. you have to understand that interface if you're going to move anywhere right. in, in the business. Right. And uh, people that don't understand that interface really usually aren't that successful. Um, the best reps used to be buyers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and uh, that's how I cut my teeth. I was a buyer and that's yeah. When you're a buyer, you meet reps, you meet manufacturers, you go to shows. It's a lot easier to move up. Well, and you learn so much about the entire cycle, not just the retail side of it. You know, the manufacturing exactly. cycle and the closeout inventory cycle. I mean, there's so many you know university universes within a giant universe that, you, that right. gives you perspective of all of them. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think uh, if they're willing to pay their dues, you know, put a few years into retail, they can easily move into the industry. That right. it's much right. harder to do it any other way to just kind of yeah. show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to jump in and at customer service level directly with a brand. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, that's true. Yeah. Interesting. So if that's someone's true. already in the biz and they want to grow their career, what are your, what's your advice to them? Mentors. Yeah. Um, I think that the skip y'all, uh, kind of leadership Academy or whatever yeah, it is. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was interviewed by one of those kids, uh, that, that, Larry Harrison was his mentor. Oh, Imagine nice. that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good mentor to have. You just got to, <laughs> you just got to take it all with a grain of salt. Yeah, so, you got to uh, pick the right spots, but you know, <laughs> yeah, there's a great. But anyway, guy. Larry gave my name, and I ended up interviewing him, and it's like he got a lot of good information for me that he wouldn't have gotten otherwise. Oh, awesome! So, yeah, great. Yeah, I think I think having mentors and picking people to help you move forward. I mean, in my case, I had Skip and. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Kern, I mean, I was just really lucky, and that's how I got into nonprofit work. Without without them, I I, I may not have gone that direction. Mm, right, right. That's awesome. And it's been really, and it's been really good for me. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned you're going sailing today. What other outdoor activities do you still participate in? Um, in the summer, I sail paddle and ride road bikes, and then oh, cool. in the winter, I the winter I go skiing, uh -huh. um, alpine and uh, Nordic, and uh, and do that. And you're so. You're also quite the guitar player, right? I mean, that's something people yeah, might not guitar. know about you. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I play play guitar and do vocals. I I just finished playing a wedding. <laughs> oh, fun! Awesome, a one man yeah, band got, at a wedding. My, yeah, my niece got married. Sweet, and uh, asked me to play the wedding, so I played that. Oh, very cool. Uh, that was that was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, I got a lot of hobbies, which makes it. I'm not working that many hours these days. Uh -huh. It's kind of nice to to kick back. I, my wife's still working, which is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to your wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks, Judy. Really appreciate it. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah, she's got a part time job. She uh -huh. she edited out of a out of a high paying job in the financial industry that was super high stress. And, Ooh, uh, yeah. And now she's a librarian three days a week, and you know it's our life is just a lot smoother. It's awesome. good. Awesome, very cool. That's good. Yeah, yeah, it is good. Yeah. So, um, how about some favorite books or books? Do you give books as gifts very often? Uh, the the books I do give as gifts are Skip's book. I've given oh, that yeah, one yeah. a bunch of times. Great book. Uh, yeah. Brendan Leonard's books I I give all the time. I really like Brendan. I like the way he writes. Big shout out to Brendan. Mm -hmm. We'll link to his and, uh, some of his stuff. Yeah, I mean he's just a he's a great writer and 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 his stuff is really relevant. I mm -hmm. I really enjoy that. Um, and that, you know that's about it. I'm not yeah. a huge reader. Okay, not yeah. a huge reader. So how about uh, what's your best outdoor gear purchase under a hundred dollars? The Dragon's Fire. Uh, what's that? That's a dollar seventy five <laughs> at Paragus Outdoors in Ely. <laughs> the dra I've it's never heard huge, of it. 
the dragon's fire. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a low tech device. It's a tube of, uh, like the size of a straw with a mouthpiece on one end and a little, and a, and a little, uh, nozzle on the other end and you you can get it close to a fire and blow through it and spark a fire up oh interesting yeah fire starter. big crowd big big crowd pleaser big <laughs> crowd pleaser well we'll yeah. have to link to that on Pragas show well show yeah, yeah 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 Pragas so, has all the cool, all the cool stuff for awesome yeah yeah, cool. yeah so it was actually given to me by uh one of the instructors as a gift because oh. i was complaining that i'd have to be huffing the fire the whole time and he's like you need a dragon's fire it's like oh okay well How probably up they? there where you guys are it's you know you get a lot of damp wood and it's, it's pretty tough to keep a fire going out here man you can just blow on something and also you start a forest fire yeah not up there not up there and, and plus you got a battle of cloud of mosquitoes at the same time so the expediency <laughs> is the is the key can it's you also expediency. use the dragon's fire to blow the mosquitoes away? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's bad up there. It's first, I just did a trip up there about three weeks ago, and it's like you had to wear a head net. It oh was, man, wow! It was just terrible. No oh, bummer. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite piece of gear for for. All uh, right, well, we'll put a link cheap. to that for folks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. do you have any other favorite tools or apps or podcasts that you do use to help keep your sanity or fitness or? inspirational podcast you listen to uh i listen to semi-rad okay yeah do that one uh sometimes dirtbag uh diaries oh that's a good one yeah i like it, that yeah if i'm if i'm traveling a lot I, I listen to that i mean those are great stories yeah cool awesome those are great stories uh anything else you want to say to our audience or ask of our audience uh not really i i just the the outdoor industry is a great place to 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 stake it down. And, yeah. and if, if, if you have the patience and the drive, it, mm -hmm. it can, I mean, it, it's kept me alive my entire life mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and in every aspect of it. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed the repping end of it, the retail end of it. I was actually a manufacturer for a short time and, mm -hmm. you know, every aspect of it, I've learned a lot, but what I've noticed was that people are really, uh, forthcoming with information and they want to help you out i mean it's not a super yeah. competitive bullshit environment that way yeah it's one of those few businesses i've talked to a number of folks where you know competitors will sit down at the end of the day and have a beer and talk shop where uh, you know th there's very few other industries i think that that goes on i don't know because i've been in the outdoor biz but for right. so long but yeah it's it's awesome no it doesn't go on uh, i've got uh, my neighbor is is a kingpin in the lighting industry and it's huh. it's you know, it's pretty nasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Although he's got a great sense of humor about it. He has one competitor, and he, uh, he had their name printed on a bunch of urinal pucks and uh, put in the convention center. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I thought that was, I thought that was that was a humorous way of playing the game. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, humorous way. But yeah, outdoor industry is a good place to be, and and uh, it's also a great place to protect the environment. I mean, we we have yeah. The whole Bears here situation shows that we've got some political clout here, and, and uh, yeah, you know well, we can make a difference. Yeah, it's good to know that we've we've got some pretty big numbers that we can put behind that now and go in there and ha you know it's a, we have a whole different seat at the at the table and different perspective on what we bring to the table. So I think that's going to help us right. moving forward. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, where can people find you on LinkedIn, Facebook? What's the best way? Uh, LinkedIn's good. Okay, cool. I'll put a link to that on the show notes. And yeah. uh, appreciate the time, Jeff. It's been awesome. Yeah, you too, Rick. It's it's great catching up. It's always great catching up with you. I never know what uh, yeah what what you're going to be up to. So it's what always crazy uh, thing I'm up to next. <laughs> well, this is really cool. I mean, this I, has been I, fun. I, yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's a great catching up with people, and I think it's good. You know, I love all the advice that people have for folks just getting started or folks wanting to grow their career. I think there's like say a lot of opportunity. It's a great business. It and, is a great um, business. You know, pick a couple guys and call call them up and. Ment have them mentor you or just get advice from them and move forward. So, Yeah, there you go. Yeah, cool. Right on. Well, enjoy your sale today. I will. Take and, it easy. And uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah, bye. All right, bye. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Jeff Weedman. You can find Jeff on LinkedIn at Jeff, W-E-I-D-M-A-N. You can learn more about Big City Mountaineers and get involved at BigCityMountaineers.com. You can find links to all the info we discussed in the show notes at TheOutdoorBizPodcast.com slash episode 027. I appreciate the support and feedback. Please be sure and share your favorite episodes on the socials. And until next time, thank you so much for listening. 
If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher or go to the outdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Twitter at Rick underscore Says, that's S-A-E-Z, and my email is rick at the outdoorbizpodcast.com. Thanks for listening and all the support, and a huge shout out to all my guests, and until next time, be sure to make time to get outside. <laughs>